Hey everyone, this is Crystal with Open to Public HVAC School. Today we're going to talk about how to successfully remove a blower, uh, the whole blower assembly so that you can replace a motor, capacitor, etc. Um, some safety items you might want to consider are gloves, some fairly durable ones. They can be light. Just make sure they will protect your hand. Uh, those blower wheels especially can be sharp, so protect your hands. Uh, I like to bring different size nut drivers, but some of you guys probably have some handy tools where there's a bunch of them in one. The problem with those I found is the length. Uh, sometimes a lot of blower housings have very little space you can get into. So you might want to have something that's ratcheting that can bend in on an angle or tools they make now. Let's see, something kind of like that where if I can get it here, good gracious, um, can bend at the joint to get you there. Now we're in a business, so ours is going to be in a closet unit here. It's the easiest for us to get to because there is no ceiling. We're in a drop ceiling. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start into closet units. As you can see, a lot of closet units cross over the vent. So sometimes it can be a little tough to get into that. So let's go ahead and get set up. I'll grab my tools and we'll see how to remove a furnace blower motor. All right, first things first, we're going to have to remove this louvered panel to get to the blower housing. There's going to be a little lip or section, at least on a lot of these type models where it's not separated to where we can just pull the bottom off. So the first thing we're going to do very first thing before even messing with this is make sure our power is off. Safety first, folks. So make sure your switch is turned off. Once you know the power has been flipped off, if you wanna be extra careful, you can actually go turn it off at your main breaker. It should be listed which one is on there. So once we know the power's off, everything's safe, we can go ahead and start removing our panel. Now, some of these are gonna have bolts. These do not. Most of them that I've come across don't. And we're just gonna lift, slide it out. Now, this unit's super old. We actually don't use it anymore. So, once we've got this part off, this is all your burner elements, your gas valve, your inducer motor, pressure switch, this is your junction box to where your main power comes in. Now, if you want to be extra careful, even though you flip the power switch off, you might want to take your meter where these two wires join up here, or if there's another section to some exposed wires, again, be careful, but just come in here and check and make sure that there is no live high side voltage. So once we know that's good, we're ready to go we're gonna remove our second section. So these are tabbed in, they'll come off. Don't lose it, just saying, you never know. So here in our main panel is our control board, our transformer, and then wires. And these are thermostat wires and a float switch, which is up there on the top. <laughs> Make sure you take a picture of all of this. If for some reason you need to unplug it, you don't have to worry about that because you have pictures. Now this has a plate over it, so what I'm going to have to do is unscrew this box, remove it, put it off to the side, and then we can get back to where the actual blower is in this metal drum. <sighs> Let's get to it. All right. Right up here in this top section, you can see these two quarter inch bolts here, which are holding this plate in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unscrew these, remove that and set it off to the side. 
be extra careful when you're messing with electronics and wires. One, because of power, obviously. And the other is there's a bunch of delicate parts. Uh, a lot of times they'll be like, limit switch or something like that, that uh, even technicians break. So just be wary of that. And we'll see if this one has it. If it does, yeah, I'll point it out for you. Let's go ahead and unscrew this and then remove this plate. So here we go. We got a quarter inch nut driver here. I'm going to unscrew that. And you know, obviously make sure that it's not gonna completely and totally fall over because, you know, stuff gets expensive if you break it. Especially these newer control boards I've seen that can range anywhere from 300 to, on a carrier infinity system, I've even run into some that about a thousand dollars, which is a communicating system. So they can definitely be a pretty penny. And I don't know about you, but a thousand bucks for a control board, it kind of hurts. All right, so we got little tabs here on this side that we had to remove out of the way. Okay, and as you can see, this is dangling. We're going to locate our motor wires here. And they're going to be, I'll give you a picture, a close up of normally what these are labeled, uh, just a second here on the screen. But we're going to have our spares. There's spare one, spare two. These are speeds you're not using. And then of course your heat and your cool. And then for this one, since it's gas, you're gonna have one for your neutral. Now, obviously you're going to have to remove the drum. So that means you're going to have to remove wires. So again, take a lot of photos, different angles, and we're going to remove these out of here. There we go. All right. Now again, with these wires, make sure that you know where they go. And we're gonna remove these and I'll be able to then set this off to the side and out of the way. Okay, now one thing I did forget to mention at the beginning of the video is also a screwdriver. Many of you will run into situations like this where you'll have to remove this thermostat wire. So again, cannot stress this enough, make sure you know where all these wires go. And you can see how this one has two white wires. So especially be mindful of this bundle goes here, these go here. So make sure you know. So we're just gonna gently unscrew this. I might have grabbed the wrong bit. Oh, I sure did. All right, two shakes. All right, now we're cooking good looking. Let's get us going now. Little known fact, we will judge you as technicians on how dirty your cabinet is. We also share photos and gossip. Just so you know. All right, now that we are free, we're free. We can set this off to the side. I'm not using the most delicate touch and I can promise you most technicians don't, but you'd be shocked. So let's get our stuff out of the way. And now, dun, 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 we have to figure out how to pull this out of here. So we're gonna go in, take a look. All right, guys, just wanted to show you real quick up here. You can see there is a screw and then the rest of it clips in. We just need to get 
these two on the corners and then we're gonna unclip it. Get my big old booty up in here. And those look like they are 5 sixteenths. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab our 5 sixteenths. And we are going to get up in it. And thankfully, because this is all clipped, it's clipped into place, so you're not going to have to worry about it, you know, coming and we can get under this spot here. Now that we've unscrewed the bolts, my headlamp's acting up here because I have it on motion. So now that we're sure that there's no more bolts, we can reach around and check. So it feels like it's just clipped in here. Uh, the other thing you might want to check for when you reach back there is if you find a little bitty disc. A lot of times these discs are mounted to where you can see them and it's all that is is a temperature limit switch. So if say your motor you know, catches on fire or burns or gets too hot, it's gonna trip that limit and cut power. So that's what those do. If you break one, replace it for your own safety. All right. So this is gonna slide right out here. Hopefully you guys can see. And that whole big thing is going to come out. Now, these are extremely sharp, so be very careful when handling it. All right, now, once we've got our bad boys on here, which you should have had on in the first place, shame on me. And after we've got all this, we're gonna pull it out. So this is a fairly common PSC motor. As you can see, this has been in here without use for quite some time now. And they'll have a capacitor. There's your motor, your bracket, motor wires. Now I have another video on how to, rem you know, remove this and install it. I'll provide a link in the description as well as uh, have it up in the videos or you can just go over to our HVAC school videos and find it. Side note, when you do put this back together, uh, make sure that you do not crimp any of the wires down. So just be mindful of that when you pull the door back over the housing. And when you do pull the door down over the blower again, Make sure it is the solid panel and not the louvered panel. The louvered panel is going to go where your burners are. Just make sure you're careful with these wires and you don't crimp them or bend them because they will short out against the door. Okay, now one of the hardest things other than getting the motor removed I found is sometimes getting these to line up again when you're placing them inside or removing them. Sometimes you have to do the jiggle, jiggly like my arms. Once we put them in, thankfully these clips are going to hold it into place, the rail, and then we're going to screw these back up inside. Now, if you're in my situation, um, I cannot not have upper body strength because below that is a straight drop onto concrete floor. So if I drop this, yeah. <laughs> so all we're going to do is we're going to find those rails. We're going to line these up and slide it right back in. Okay, we're 
gonna try to make sure it's pushed. There we go. All the way back. And then we're going to place our plate back up here after we screw our screws in. Hello. So we're going to screw our screws back in. We're going to replace our plate and then reconnect the wires because you were good and you took photos, right? Right. Good to go. All right, so that's it. We have removed, we've screwed back in the housing and just screw your plate back on there, connect your wires and Bob's your uncle. Alright everyone, well, take care. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and leave some comments below if you have any questions or something that I didn't cover, just let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. So, take care!